Hey, y'all. Welcome to the Coffee and Collaborations podcast, yet another episode. I am your host, Kimberly Winborn of Kimberly Winborn LLC and Coffee and Collaborations Media. I am uh, your co-host, Alvin Great, CEO of Good Steward Apparel and lead designer of Good Steward Apparel Brands. Uh, today, family, the, the collaboration continues. We have a, another awesome guest in our our month of fatherhood, celebrating fatherhood and entrepreneurs. Today, we get the opportunity to talk with uh, Patrick J. Patterson. Uh, you want to wave to everybody? <laughs> what, up, what, up, what up? 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 I love that wave. <laughs> All right, that's that Arsenio Hall, like bringing in the show. That's right. <laughs> That's right. That's right. <laughs> so, so Patrick J. Patterson is a has a master's in social work, has a master's in uh, public health, is a president of Global Partners for Fathers and Families Consulting LLC, a firm that specializes in growing the capacity and funding of agencies funded on empowering fathers, men, and boys. Also, fund a development expert. Patrick has written and led grant writing efforts that have successfully resulted in more than 55 million in grant awards from federal, state, um, and private foundations funding resources, including multi-million dollar federal grant awards during President George W. Bush and President Barack Obama. Um, Patrick wow. is a, he's a, he's an expert with uh, working with fathers and boys and he's he's done an a lot a lot of amazing work with the nfl and and uh the chicago bulls and and we're going to get an opportunity to talk about it all i don't want to give you guys all the tea that's good that's good that's yeah. good thanks yeah. al i'm excited i, I might need you to write me a grant for something listen you, <laughs> you know how to get you know how to get look, look, look i'm gonna have to figure something out i need you right here <laughs> you know how to get me al yeah you know how to get me do you, so you just had a million dollars? Like, I, I, like I'm, gonna need, I'm gonna need to figure something out. Yeah. But you just had a successful grant writing class recently too, right? I did a uh, on this past Thursday. I did a virtual grant writing. I usually do them in person all over the country, but I did my first virtual for the public, and it was crazy. Wow. It was crazy. There were people from seven different states. Um, it went two and a half hours, and I closed the webinar. I said, "Okay, guys, I'm wrapping up." And so I decided, you know, you mentioned Arsenio Hall, and I stayed on. And I said, you know, if y'all have questions, we'll stay on. You know, I want to make sure you guys get And for another hour, people were on. Like, nobody left. Nobody, it was done. I'm done. Hey, guys, I'm done. Nobody left, and we stayed on for another hour. So um, at the end of the conversation, they asked me, well, when is your 201? And because I'm in business, Kimberly, you know this, I said, it's next month. It's next <laughs> month, guys. Um, <laughs> So July 18th, Saturday, July 18th, is our next virtual grant writing training. And, um, you know, God has been good, but I will tell you in the space that we're in right now, people need people more now than ever. I love the fact you're talking yeah. about collaboration. People need people more now than ever. And I was reminded of that weeks ago, but this past Thursday with that training, there were people who just wanted to be connected to yeah. figure out what they can do in their small spaces. And so um, God is good. God yeah. Is good. You know what I love about that, Patrick, is, um, and this is kind of off the you know topic of what we're uh, planning to talk about, but we all said that we are going to just have some fun. But yeah. one of the things that I want to note, a lot of times during webinars and trainings and workshops, that's it. The, the presenter is like, my time is up. Yeah. That's it. You, you know, if they pay, you've only paid for this hour, I'm out. Right. So yeah. the fact that you gave another hour or so of your time to people yeah. and recognize that they just needed to connect and needed a little bit more, that says a lot about you. Um, one of the things that when I go to networking meetings now, all these virtual ones, what I realized during this time is that I want to work with people that want to lead with love. And yeah you know, heart-centered leadership. It has to change, to your point. You know, we got to change. Yeah, 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 yeah. So I love yeah. that. No, yeah, it, has, it has to be all about bringing, bringing value. Another thing I like that you said, I, you get so many people who, who say that they are self-made. Like, how can anybody be self-made? Like, everybody, somebody had to give you an opportunity to do something. And it's, it's always all about the collaboration. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. were you about to say something? 
No, I was going to just say, I think in the space, um, in my work with fathers, in my work with grants, um, over the years, what has served me well has been the people's perspective of what I do and how I do it. Like, mm -hmm. there's lots of other grant writers. There are lots of other fatherhood experts. But, you know, the gift that my parents gave me as a boy, you know, going to church in South Carolina, was that you treat people like you want to be treated. You treat them yeah. fairly. Um, you make people feel a certain way when they finish talking to you. And I, God has blessed me to go 45 states, seven countries to do the work that I've done. And in my experience, when I get feedback and messages and mail from people, it's never like, wow, you were so brilliant. It's like, I felt like you were in a room of 3,000 people and I felt like it was just me and you. Yeah. As I think about what has been important during this time, is the average brother, the average brother who doesn't have a platform like this, who doesn't have a following, mm -hmm. when he reaches out to me or reaches out to you guys, what we can offer is just a minute more, not a minute, but a minute more that allows him to feel like, okay, I'm not by myself. And that to me is, you know, the space of where grace comes in, the space of transformation and the space of healing, you know, all of my work, has been in a space where I have tried to help people to understand that you are not the only one. Yeah. You know, you don't have to say that to people, but yeah. you can show them by your response, not your words, your response. You know, my mother used to say this, and now I get it. She would say, listen and silent have the same set of letters for a reason. And so you got to do that more than you do talking. There is no yeah. other word that has that same function where the letters are like that, but they mean the exact same thing. And yeah. that to me is so foundational to the work that you guys are doing and the work that I hope to do moving forward. So uh, I get excited about conversations like this just because <laughs> I know that connection breeds transformation. And people mm -hmm. right now, for those who have platforms, um, you don't have to say the right thing, you gotta say the real thing right now. Yeah. Very important. I like that. Yeah. That's true. <laughs> I'm saying that was poetic. Like that's true. <laughs> you know, we so many people are focused on saying the right thing, but we do have to say the real thing. We gotta come from a different space. Yeah. Um, in order to lead well. And we gotta come and do it together. You said something about connection um equaling transformation and evolving <laughs> into transformation. My whole company is founded on that particular premise. Actually, my brand, like I can't, I personally cannot not be a connector. I cannot not be a nurturer. I know that's no. a double negative. No, no, you're good. I got it. <laughs> you know, I, I did get a degree in English. Yeah, but anyway. yeah, yeah, yeah. She has her degree, people. So <laughs> right, I got it. I got it. But I just, that some, somehow that just hits the point. So, and that's what I, uh, one of the reasons why we wanted to highlight fathers who are leaders um, to that point is that there are so many uh, views of fathers that are negative, especially yeah. the black father. Yeah. And yes. that's not the experience for mm -hmm. everyone. It's not the experience that we want to leave, you know, and, and, and for people to continue to have all the time. And so to have someone like you, as well as some of the other guys who are on and who will be on, yeah. Um, to talk about that. I want to hear more about that fatherhood initiative and, yeah. you know, how you started it. And I think a, a portion of that that uh, makes me curious is, did it become your purpose or was it your purpose? And then you went out there. So No, my, my story is similar to a lot of guys who do this work, but I grew up just very briefly in South Carolina. I'm the third of four. I'm a middle child. I got an older brother, an older sister and a younger brother. And I grew up in the projects like a lot of kids. Uh, I'm 45, I was born in 74. Um, from birth till about 15, we lived in the projects. And my parents were the few, one of few parents that were married um, where I grew up. Mm -hmm. In the middle of my eighth grade, ninth grade, 10th grade years, uh, my father was formerly incarcerated, spent many years you know, in and out. And then when I was born, for whatever reason, he stopped you know, doing stuff that got him incarcerated. So all I knew as a kid was a guy who went to three jobs a day. My dad worked three jobs a day. And I never saw him, like, go to bed. I saw him take naps. I never saw him go to bed. And at about the age of 14, uh, we were, my dad had found a job that was at a plant. In a year's time, 
he became one of the managers. And so we moved um, from one side of town to the other side of town to a house. We were renting it, but it was our house, Al. You know, it was our, we had to own, we had our own address, we had a little fence. Um, and moving and on that, up like the Jeffersons. Like the Jeffersons. Like the Jeffersons. <laughs> That's exactly what it was like. My dad um, quit all three of his jobs to take one job. He got a job with benefits. And in that year's time, you know, Jordan's, which we never got. My mother was a domestic. She cleaned houses on the other side of town. So if I had a pair of Jordans or Bo Jackson's, they were hand-me-downs from some white family. So that was my experience growing up. So fast forward, my dad got this job. He told my mom, he said, he never liked her doing that job, but that's what we had to do. So he said, listen, I got this job. You can stop doing that. And we did. So life changed. He got a, a certificate. A year in, he got a certificate. They had a plaque. They had a ceremony. My dad wasn't out alcoholic before I was born, stopped that same 15 years. And this given night, he went to this program and after being recognized, he's like me and like a lot of us, you don't get rid of your friends because you got your degree. Mm -hmm. You keep in touch with people. So the neighborhood where I used to live, that I told you about, is still where my father grew up. So that night he got the plaque, he went home to, to uh, visit some of his buddies to say, look, I got this plaque. You know, um, you see my prop. Uh, yeah. <laughs> I got this plaque, you know, not so much look at me, but man, um, this is different. And so after 15 years of sobriety, one of his buddies said to him, we should celebrate. And so they started off pushing my dad to smoke or drink a beer. He said no several times. He's told me the story hundreds of times. But after three rounds of asking him to just take, just have one beer, he drunk a beer. He finished a case of beer, hadn't drank in 15 years. They started drinking, you know, liquor, and then they ended up shooting dope that night. And that was the first night that I recognized what the word relapse meant. But my father, for three days, he didn't come home. Mm. He, 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 he just fell in the gutter. I'm 15 at the time. When he finally came home, and I'll end the story with this, when he finally came home, um, it was three days after, he just got a plaque, but he didn't show up, he didn't call. So he hustled back to the job. And when he got to the job, you know what happened to him, right? Got fired? Got fired. Yeah. Got fired. So everything shifted for me personally at 15. That's kind of like that fork in the road for most boys. Um, but my father was my guy. He's the guy that taught me to swing, you know, how to shoot, how to throw a football, you know, what to see when you see a man that poses a threat to you. When you go downtown to the other side of town, he taught me how to walk around that community. You know, he was the one that said at eighth grade education, I want you to do better than me. He didn't finish eighth grade, do better than me. So without knowing how the world was gonna go, he was my inspiration. And so when my parents separated, my father, as I went to my junior, senior year of high school, I could be playing football on a Friday night and there's a disruption in the stands. It's my father being thrown out of the game. When I played basketball, there's a disruption in the gym. It's my father being thrown out. When I went to college, I went to Benedict College in Columbia. It's in my neighborhood where I grew up. Mm -hmm. My father would be in my dorm. He would literally find a dorm director and he'd say, what room does Patrick, you know? And back then, they say he 224, but my father would be drunk and everything. When I got my internship, my first job, all this was in the same community. Um, my father was following me. And what I learned, what I learned is that he wasn't trying to leave me. He was trying to stay connected to me, if that makes mm, any sense. Yeah. But he had an issue. My dad did not know that he was special. And so the work that I do now, now that I'm older, now I understand, and that began my work in father about that same age but the work that I do now is to specifically let men know that they matter yeah I let mothers know you gotta tell the brother your son good job when I see women who have ex baby fathers I call them co-parents I don't use baby father baby mother I, I know he made you mad I know he made you mad I know you don't like him for lots of reasons but his kids need him. My, I needed my father at that yeah. time. 
And my goal in life is to try my best to make sure that no other kid goes without that love from both mom and dad, and then specifically for fathers, that these brothers know that they are valued. It's kind of the how I got to it. It's taken me to the White House. I worked under Bush. I worked under President Obama. Um, so it's not pay. It's passion that has had me doing this for 20 some odd years. So that's the long answer to your, to your question. Wow. I love, and I love that story and that answer um, because it's from the heart and it definitely is real. Um, How many people I wonder, you know, that are listening that can relate to that somehow. Yeah. You know, some portion. Yeah. A lot of people. Yeah. Uh, Yeah. I see people of all walks of life, ethnicities, income levels. And like I said, I've been around the world a couple of different times. I'll tell you this, when I was in Mongolia, me and a colleague of mine went to Mongolia. If people don't know what it is, you can Google it, but it's in like East Asia. Mm-hmm. I'm five six. Al, you're gonna like this. I was looking like Shaquille O'Neal over there. You know what I mean? Wow. I'm, looking over, I'm looking over the crowd in, in, in Asia. But what I realized when I was there is um, we had a translator the entire time I was there. And as we talked to parents, we talked to moms, we talked to dads, we talked to kids. The translator translated our questions, but what I recognized was the tears look the same wherever you are. When yeah. The father looks. yeah. There's no different color tears. They all look the same. And the pain that most people think is only a black problem is not just a black problem. Um, on the flip side, there's probably more fathers actively engaged than what is purported in the media. Yeah, it is. It is def- definitely black fathers. You know, the not always married, yeah. but statistically they they spend more time than other other races. Like they yeah. they've shown that. So it is it is definitely that stereotype. I, I remember you know me and me and my son. It was just me and him, and people thought I was just such like a unicorn. Yeah. You have your son. I was like, like, that's, that's, yeah. That's my son. Like, yeah, but they, yeah. Would, they would just be so surprised. I'm like, yeah, that's, that's yeah. my son. <laughs> but, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. I think um, it, hearing you talk about both of you all talk about that and being the woman um, on the line, um, yeah. I think it is. It does. You. It is kind of like a unicorn owl because of what we've been fed. Sure. Like. You, it is, yeah. Point Patrick of the media and our community. Like, yeah. how many sisters or women in general, not even just black women, are it's like we're taught to beat up um on the man. You yeah. know, even 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 when you say married, now how many times do you hear a woman joke about her husband and it's kind of more in a negative way than a positive? Yeah. 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 It's it's more like a, a extra child. Yeah. yeah. Exactly. Yeah. And so, yeah. you know, that kind of demotes the the strength and power and, you know, that the leadership of the man. And yeah. so how I mean that's got it that's trickling down through. And so it does seem like a unicorn. It's like what? You have your son, you know, like You're amazing. You're amazing. <laughs> yes. Yeah, yeah. It, it is. It is, it is very much embedded into the culture. You know, if you look at like in bathrooms, we, we, men just got changing tables. Yeah. Like I, I remember changing uh, my daughter in the bathroom and a guy comes in, he's like, oh, you playing Mr. Mom today? I'm like, no, like I'm being a dad. Like, what do you mean? (laughs) Dads don't change diapers? Like, what are you talking about? Yeah. Or, or you hear a guy say, "Oh, I'm babysitting today." How, how do you babysit your own kids? <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, I want to. I yeah. want to be a part of the solution, you know. And I, and I love what you're doing because you also support other initiatives, other people who have initiatives that are sure. out here empowering fathers. Can you tell us about that? Like how you're collaborating with those other organizations? Here's what I know for sure. When I think about the work that I'm trying to do, that you guys are doing. Not one of us can do it by ourselves. Mm -mm. So people are very surprised and they say this to me a lot of times. And I see myself as I play all sports as a kid. I see myself as a teammate. That's how I, that's how I live life. I'm a teammate. Mm -hmm. Um, 
So people who might see me differently when they reach out and I respond, they're like, I'm like, go for it. Like, that's dope. Like, let me know how I can share it on my page. People are very surprised at that. And that yeah. tells me how the world operates because that's not who I am. But what I know is I might not be the person that connect with the father, that father, but you might be able to. Mm -hmm. Al, Kimberly, you might, Al, you might be able to say something that I can't communicate to this guy. So the way I think about this is we need everybody. So every year, the last five years, I've done a huge fathers and sons conference in South Carolina. We get 700 fathers and their sons to come out. Every year, somebody says to me, I'm, I'm going to do one bigger than yours. And I always say to them, do it, dog. <laughs> Go for it. Do it. And I say to them, we need both. We need both. Mm -hmm. So yeah. I might not be able to reach the youngest of the fathers. I might not be able to reach old fathers or white fathers. It's important that all of us do your part. So I have never struggled with competing with people. Yeah. Um, I used to say this to my like teammates. And as I've grown as a professional, there is no traffic in, in your lane. None. Mm -hmm. When you're in your lane, there is no traffic. But if you cross over in the Al's lane, now you got traffic. And so here's what people don't know that I think if they did know, God has a special set of things for each and every one of us. And if yeah. the minute that you tap into that, mm -hmm. um, the traffic that you think is in front of you, it goes away. I'm, I'm a witness. I'm a witness that the minute that I accept it, that the, I never worked at IHOP. God bless. I love IHOP. I never worked at Popeyes. This is all that I've ever done. And when I, if I could tell you about some of the places and things that I've experienced as a boy who finished high school with a 1.3 GPA, to have worked for two presidents, to have traveled the world, it is only because I have recognized this is my lane. I have daughters only. Every year after I do my fathers and sons conference, someone says, man, you got, you got to do a girls conference. <laughs> and here's what God told me. If you obey me, I will bless you. Mm -hmm. That's what he told me. So right now, you know, if you think about the way the world is going, there are lots and lots of things that people want to do to um, address racial profiling, the police brutality. There are people who have gotten off of what God has told them to join what the moment is telling them to do. Mm -hmm. And here's what I know is the man who chases two rabbits catches none. That's good. He won't catch both of those rabbits. You got to focus on one rabbit. Yeah. And if you can do that, you're going to win. But I, a lot of people, and, and I'm talking, this is what I've learned, but also I read a lot. But Focus is the hardest thing for talented people because mm -hmm. you think you can do everything, but you can't, that's but you truth. can't. That's the truth. Not well. Let me say that. Let me, mm -hmm. I won't say you can't do everything. Right. Not well and not effectively. It's harder to do everything effectively. You got to figure out what it is. Yeah. I love yeah, that my, message. My, my son uh, once told me something to that effect. You know, my son is super talented about everything. And um, I, I get on him a lot about, you know, about working hard. You know, he, he super talented, but doesn't have, you know, the passion. I, I see a lot in this generation. This generation is like super, super talented in like multiple level things, but they just, you know, the passion is like, yeah. Man. Yeah. But you know, <laughs> yeah. <They're> like, man. <laughs> but one of, the, one of the things he told me though, and he, he has some, some moments that it like blows me away. Yeah. He said, when, when you're good at one thing, you know just to focus on that one thing. When you're good at a lot of things, like you don't know really what to focus on. That's right. I was like, I was like wow. I was like, I've never thought, I was like, man. Cash out that dude some money, man. That's good. <laughs> I, I do, he, blow, he blows my mind sometimes. His, his middle name means, uh, God, well, his name is God will establish a wise counselor. And I, I remind yeah. him, he has those sparks. I see it every now and then. Yeah, yeah. that's yeah. good. Yeah. yeah, focusing is essential. I know that, one, I want to go back to what Patrick said about um, staying in your lane, because as much as we, this, this podcast, 
uh, Coffee and Collaborations Media, we can jump all over the place. One of the things that we've been focusing on is what we focus on, which is collaboration. Not and really. so in our panels, we just did a panel um, yeah. where we talked about saving our community through collaboration. And so yeah. I think both of us, while we are a great pair, because I've been doing the show by myself for a while, but I was like, I want a partner. And I asked my friend Al to join me because he has that same spirit. And that helps yeah. us. We, we're on, we're on. Now we are, we are seeing growth. We are seeing yeah. a difference in the podcast. I personally am. And I always, you know, shout him out. But you're right. Focus, focusing on staying in your lane helps to really make an impact and yeah. the impact that you're sent to make. Yeah. So. And you can do within the strand of your focus area, you can do several things. So mm -hmm. for example, I've done the fatherhood conference. I do fatherhood trainings. I've written children's books for fathers. You could go deep without having to go wide. Yeah. And I say focus is not do one thing. You know, right. if you're an artist, you learn multiple instruments. That's still music. Yeah. But I think for people to grow, they really have to be around other people who have grown. And like yeah. my breakthrough these last probably seven or eight years, um, I've been connected to some people that um, they just challenged me. You know, um, I never ever, I've written grants all my life. Um, I worked with fathers all my life. I never thought to write a children's book. And one of my good buddies, he's from Brooklyn, New York, didn't finish high school, but he's a hustler. Mm -hmm. He's a hustler. And I've gone through all this traditional schooling and blah, blah, blah. And I just felt like, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm good. He said, bro, you scared. And I said, no, I'm not, I said, I'm not, you know, Al, you know what that did to me. I said, I'm yeah. not scared. What are you talking about? He said, well, man, you got people who are following you who have children. You should definitely think about writing a children's book. And so uh, we ended up going someplace to a bookstore in DC. He was doing a children's book himself and the owner of the bookstore and probably 80 year old African-American female, she started talking about, about my father and my daughters and my wife. And she said, have you, do you have a, this is the second time. She said, do you have a children's book? I was there supporting my man. She said, do you, I said, no, I, I don't do children's books. And she said, you hard headed. That's what she said to me. She Confirmation, said, look at there. She said, you hard headed. So she said, when you get home, we were living in Delaware at the time. She said, when you get home, ask your daughters if they want to write a children's book with you. And so I, they were younger, they were six and eight, they're 14 and 12 now. So I get home, they should be in the bed, if they not, y'all know how that goes. <laughs> um, yes. So I said, hey, do y'all want to write it? Listen, after this, y'all can go to, I read to them every night. So mm -hmm. it wasn't like foreign. I said, do y'all want to write a children's book together? And here's my mind, I'm thinking like, come on, just help me to tell this lady no interest on this end. They jumped up. Yes, yes. Will we be in the book, Dad? I said, yeah, y'all will be in the book. You know? <laughs> Fast forward, um, I get back in touch with my homeboy and this lady. She's the owner of a book. It's called Sankofa Bookstore. And um, she gives me a set of tools. And she says, if you do these things, I'll take you to the next phase. Mm. So I'm like, I don't have an illustrator. I don't have any. She gave me a, a rubric to write the book. And I'll share it with you guys if you haven't seen it. So it's just amazing. But... In two hours, we wrote the children's book. Wow. Fast forward, um, the book is now in Walmart, um, Target. We've sold 10,000 copies in the last couple of years. Wow. But wow. that's obedience. Yeah. That's obedience. And it wasn't a hard thing to write because it's in my same lane. Yeah. If that makes any sense. Yeah. yeah. But fear Go is deeper, the other thing like that bothers people. I'm sorry, Al. Go deeper, like you said. Yeah, but I was going to say, too, to that point, a lot of us, when it comes to collaborating and even taking the first step, fear is so grippling for all of us, not some of us, all of us. Mm -hmm. yeah. 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 Wow. Well, we got to have you uh, come and read on the podcast because we do a virtual reading room at one o'clock um, on the days that we can get authors. So he's... Yeah, he's over there talking about being an author. Ready? What does it I'll say? I'm sure. And this, like, this month, you know, every this has been our third year, I think. Now we've had the book, but okay, every June, 
for Father's Day, it's not us. It's a blessing. And it's, my kids are co-authors with me. So yeah. imagine being a sixth grader and an eighth grader going to school. When we moved to North Carolina, they were sixth and eighth grade. And the principal says, you know, um, y'all wrote a book together? There's a, lot of, there's a lot of questions in that question. I said, um, yeah. He said, like a, like a book book? I said, I, just like this, I said, I keep one with me at all times, by the way. I mm -hmm. said, yeah, here it is. He's like flipping through it like, so these are y'all names. I said, yeah. <laughs> so my kids experience now from learning inventory to sales to marketing, what I, but my prayer once I got past my fear was that they would understand the stuff that I learned in my 30s earlier. Yeah. And they got it now. They know how to save. They know what savings looks like, you know, so it's just deeper, deeper, deeper. I love that. That's, that's amazing. Yeah. One of the things you, you mentioned about your, your wife and that, that collaboration. And, and I always tell, I always tell women, like women have a special gift to motivate men. Oh, yeah. I was like, if you, if you motivate your man, encourage your man, he, he will go fight a bear with a butter knife, <laughs> butt naked, like with no questions asked. <laughs> There's Talk a bleep about that collaboration somewhere. with your wife a little bit. <laughs> well, I heard a bleep as you were talking. <laughs> you said, talk about Sharani? Yes. And talk, talk about that, that collaboration a little bit. How, how has that affected, you know, your business and everything? And, and just You know general. what? I will be very honest. Next week will be 23 years we've been married. So we've been together for a long, long time. I asked her to date awesome. me June 4th. 10.46 p.m. 1991. Wow. The timing of that is important to me because that's the same space that my parents separated. Hmm. I saw fit when what I thought was going to drop off, he elevated me. Um, she is, she's everything to me. Um, when I was not doing well in school, as a high school, she's a year older than me. Um, she's the one that said to me, um, and I played ball and I was decent. She was like, you know, I begged her to date me. And she said, you know, for lots of, and where I grew up, Al, and Kimberly, you might know this too, but I mean, I, I played sports. So I didn't get a lot of no's for the people in my neighborhood when you want to be mannish. I'll put, put it like that. <laughs> but she was the first girl who I wanted to, um, be managed with that said to me at that time in my life, she said, no, 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 no. She was a virgin. She said, no, 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 no. She said, um, I'm not interested in dating boys. She was in high school too. And so fast forward, um, her telling me no made her become a focus of mine. Mm -hmm. And so the next couple of days in cafeteria, I would say to her, um, like, what is it going to take? And I'm asking, I'm asking the managed boy question. And she said, listen to me, I think you're cute, but I don't think you're funny. She said, you're smarter than you say you are. And if you want to be my boyfriend, you're going to have to go to college. Mm -hmm. 17, 16, mm -hmm. she's a year older than me. So I had one goal in mind with her. I'm not going to explain that, um, but she challenged me to start thinking about life beyond high school. Yeah. Mind you, at that same time, my mind was on my father and my mother. Mm -hmm. Homeless, grandma, auntie, we was, you know, pillar to post. Fast forward, um, got to college, proposed to her in college. At this time, she's still maintaining being a virgin. Mm -hmm. So her father, 6'4", 270, was a man that said to me, um, and I played ball with her brother, so I knew her dad. This guy would cheer me on every Friday night, Al. Go, Patrick, go. When I approached him to date his daughter, he said, no, Patrick, no, because he knew <laughs> who I He knew me. Um, to get to the question about our relationship, we got married in 97. At the beginning of our marriage, my wife said to me, we should work together. I said, Ain't no way. Because I appreciated the eight hours a day that she was at work and I was at work. Mm 
Mm -hmm. And everything happens in the right time. So about 10 years ago, we were living in Delaware. My wife had worked at a hospital. She was an executive. And I had started doing a lot more training and traveling, and I just could not manage my schedule. So she had a full-time job, and I was having her, like she did with you, Kimberly. Like, could mm -hmm. you respond back to her? Can you do that? And as a step of faith, we had this time we had two children. As a step of faith, we decided, you know what? Um, this might be tight for a while, but you're good at this. And she's making six figures. It was legit. I said, so we'll go to part-time. Well, she came home, Al. She said, I quit. I said, What's, wait a minute, wait a minute, wait, wait, wait. <laughs> wait, 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 wait. You're doing too much. You're doing too much. Um, she quit her job. Mm -hmm. But to your point, Al, she knew what I couldn't see. She always believed in me. She said, we're going to be fine. Um, wow. Our relationship our relationship is in such alignment. I don't miss important dates because she manages my calendar. Mm -hmm. I don't have to apologize for missing a birthday or a wedding or an event for my children or for our relationship because she manages my calendar. I don't have any concerns because there's alignment. There's alignment. And we have not missed anything because of that. But communication is one, separating the two, um, when we have work conversations, we have work conversations, like I'm talking to you guys. Mm -hmm. When it's me and her as, as a couple, we have couple conversations. We took a ride this morning. We just got up before the kids got up. We took a ride. We're not talking about work. And so keeping that, but also understanding she's really good at this. We're in business to do business. So like all the people that text me and Facebook me, friends, um, she literally is the gate. And that... She knows my gift mm -hmm. and she wants to keep me in my space of my gift. And so like the riffraff, that's an old term. Um, she gets rid of that so that I can be my greatest. She is a detailed person. So we're both working in our gift areas as well. But it's been great, man. I, if I tell you what we did the last four months, um, financially and on the business side, um, you wouldn't believe me. I don't even share it with people. But I could not have done this without my wife doing what she does to make me, you know, who I am. So, and I love her. I trust her. Um, there's nothing greater for a man, to your point, Al, than to have a woman that believes in you. Yes. There are days where I'm like, I don't know. She says, baby, <laughs> you got this. And once I get that battery in my back, um, but that's the dynamic for a lot of our couples mm -hmm. that people think it's automatic. We've been at it for a long time. We weren't always this harmonious, but I always tell people like, you really want to wait till your food is fully cooked. Most folks want that microwave thing. Yeah, that's you true. Got the whole meal. Yeah. And you've got to be there. Our last conversation before we got married was that we would never mention divorce. 23 years later, it's never. We've had days where you're like, you know what? We're not going to say the word. <laughs> but we've never, ever thought about another door. There's no back door to our conversation, mm -hmm. our relationship. And that's how this works so well now. So I love her. I oh, love wow. Her. She's bad. That's amazing. That's amazing. Oh, love love that entire answer. <laughs> like, <Love her. laughs> all love these her. women are going to step their game up. All the love men her. listening. <laughs> like, love her. Oh, awesome. Good. Good. Awesome. Good. So um, we realize and know family is essential. Your relationship with your wife is essential. This fatherhood, all of these fatherhood initiatives are essential. So all of these things, um, uh, your service, all of these different things that make you up are the reason why we wanted to have you on the podcast. Um, you. And I just really, truly have enjoyed this time together. Um, Al, do you have anything else that you want to ask or say? Um, before we close out, I mean, I could sit here and talk with Patrick all day, 
<laughs> yeah, definitely, definitely. It, it has yeah. definitely been a treat. Uh, I, I think it's. I think you. I think it is important for you to. I don't know how much you talk about marriage, but I, that conversation about marriage. Marriage is one of those things that is, is really important to me as well. And you know, it's one of the corner, the foundation pieces of our society. And yeah. I think a lot of people are not not getting it. And uh, yeah. we just had a, a a marriage panel, the collaboration of marriage. So. Yeah. That is definitely that's definitely important. But we, we appreciate you coming on. I yep. definitely love all the the nuggets you dropped, and you gave me some new sayings and some new quotes. <laughs> that I'm, I'm gonna be thinking about. Yeah, why are we trying to have? Why are we trying to have Patrick on speed dial though? Like we uh, <laughs> like, oh, collaboration man. collaboration of marriage, the yep. kids' virtual reading room, the panel. And <laughs> <laughs> hey, I'm a teammate, guys. I'm a teammate. So. Love it. <laughs> I love it. If I leave a couple things, can I just say a couple things? Yeah, yeah. I was just about to ask, did you have anything you wanted to close out with? Yeah. One, in honor of Father's Day, um, last year this time, I started a group on Facebook called Carolina Fathers. Okay. And it was because of a dad I was talking to who was broken and he just needed to be connected to some other guys. And that group, I started in the end of May last year. And in a year's time, we have almost 4,000 fathers in the group. Um, nice. And it's Carolina Fathers because I'm from South Carolina, but I live in North Carolina. Um, this year, to celebrate our one-year anniversary, we're giving away $500. We're doing the Carolina Fathers Father of the Year contest. Mm. So if your listeners are listening, anybody can nominate any father or father figure. The website is carolinafathers.com. Okay. Um, we just launched the website last week and we've had like the initial gift was going to be 250, but we had a donor who said, I want to up the ante. I want to give you a grill and I want to add another 250. So it's now $500 a grill and there's a prize pack for the dad. Just want to celebrate dads and elevate, you know, there are guys doing it to Al's point. So if your listeners have a chance between now and June 17th, go to carolinafathers.com and nominate a dad that you know. It doesn't have to be your father. It could be a colleague, an uncle, a brother. If he's there, even if he's not in the house, there are great dads who are not in the same house. Yeah. Nominate these guys. Nominate these guys. Nominate these guys. If nothing else, we're going to recognize all of the nominees and we'll award the father of the year. You know, for lots of reasons we're doing this, but one is just to put out front that brothers are home. They are doing their part. And so... Yeah, um, I want to say that to you guys. I say thank you guys. I'll be praying with you guys as you continue. This is a great tag team. Y'all are thank you amazing. Um, I'd say grow, grow, and grow, and don't be afraid to make money. Um, I was afraid of money, didn't know how to have a conversation. But one of my other phrases, you can write this one down too, Al. Uh, <laughs> don't let your heart get so big that it shrinks your wallet. Yeah. And a lot of people who are in the heart space, I'm in a space where my heart drives a lot of my conversations. I've had some great books and some great mentors who've helped me understand there's value in your story. There's value in your lens. We have a special lens. The three of us, we have a special lens that people don't quite always understand. And there's value in that. So don't pimp yourself by just trying to be connected to others. They really want to be connected to us. So. It is okay to make money. For your people who are listening, for your audience, money is not, not a bad thing. If you're in business, you're in business to make money, but also to make an impact. So make sure you do that. Love yeah, it. definitely. Yeah. Definitely. It's funny. Thank you. It's funny uh, because I am a part of Carolina Farm. <laughs> you are? <laughs> I, jo I joined a group. Yeah, I think it was last year. That's yeah. funny. I never put those that two and two together. Yeah, wow. I don't even post. I don't promote. You know, when I do stuff like that, um, I'm literally being obedient. That's what yeah. I was doing. So it's like I've never posted my children's books in there. I I post what guys got. A lot of guys send me. Please post this for me anonymously. They have a lot of really good questions. We get about sixteen thousand conversations a month hmm. in page, but. Um, you're never going to see me say, hey, this is my page. That's not what God told me. I did it as an act of obedience. And now we're at near 4,000 fathers. And it's all kinds of fathers. Yeah. And they're TV executives, um, bank owners. You know, when I've heard the word to move, 
you got to move. Yeah. And I have to say this. I have to say this. I always talk about the ultimate collaboration has to be with God. And Mm -hmm. what you just said is just a perfect example of that. Like you don't have to shine in the sense of an egotistical sort of scenario. You know, he didn't even know that was your page, but work is happening and things Mm -hmm. are happening and you just follow what God told you to do. And so our ultimate collaboration has to be with God. And to me, your life is an example of that. And um, so I have truly enjoyed our time. Um, Guys, make sure you follow Coffee and Collaborations. Make sure you follow Patrick Patterson. Uh, Fathers, join that group, Carolina Fathers. We're going to plug you into everything that we possibly can so that you can get connected to him because all of the fatherhood initiatives, as well as the heart-centered things that he's doing we want you to be a part of we want to share that and so coffee and collaborations is on facebook and instagram at coffee and collaborations the website is right above me coffee and collaborations.com any questions concerns anything like that you can go to info at coffee and collaborations.com very simple um really quickly as we close out we got a fun little game for patrick Mm. and it's just a speed round with some questions al you got yours open we're gonna go we can go back and forth i got them i'll do the first one because i'm I'm a comic boogie so just the first thing that comes to your mind with with these two options we're going to give you two options of things to answer just to tell people a little bit about you in a fun way okay all right so pick pick one or sometimes i guess you can pick both uh dc comics or marvel dc comics okay All right, watch a documentary or read a biography? Watch a documentary. Okay. Okay, sport, golf, or basketball? Basketball. (laughs) Uh, Okay, for exercise, lift weights or cycle run? Uh, Lifting weights. Lifting weights, okay. And last. Peanut Peanut butter and jelly sandwich or Angus burger with all the fixings? Peanut butter and jelly, bro. White bread, too. White bread, too. <laughs> White bread. <laughs> Nothing yeah. like it. Yes. You gotta, you gotta put it in the microwave for like a few seconds and let it get melted. And then get a glass of milk. I'm telling there you, you go. change your whole life. There you, you go. change your whole on, life. <laughs> on the porch. On the porch. Yeah. <laughs> oh, my God. You know what? Everybody has their peanut butter and jelly life. Like, <laughs> their tradition, their ritual. And so I yeah. thought it would be fun. We thought that would be fun. Thank you for participating. I love it. That's great. Awesome. Love All right, it. well, have a great day. Thank you for joining us. And you guys, thank you for joining Coffee and Collaborations. You know what? The collaboration is essential to your win. So go out yeah. here and shine, focus, do the things necessary to show up to make a difference and make an impact. We'll see you soon on Coffee and Collaborations. This has been a Coffee and Collaborations media production. Follow us at coffeeandcollaborations.com, on Twitter at coffee in the letter N collab, on Instagram at coffee and collaborations, and on Facebook at coffee and collaborations. See you in the next episode.